How do T-bills compare to money market funds? Interesting question, Chris, from Greenbrier. Uh, T-bills are essentially government IOUs. Now, if that makes you feel warm and fuzzy, then, <laughs> then uh, you know, that might be a good thing. But, you know, T-bills are short-term investments in government debt and U.S. government debt, despite all of the things that uh, people may want to throw stones at it, it is still the benchmark for all yeah. debt in this country and around the world. And and we haven't said yet, I think it would almost go without saying, but it is interest-bearing. So yes. interest-bearing IOUs from, from the government. And then let's compare that to money markets. So money markets are going to invest in several low-risk assets, including treasury bonds, CDs, short-term high-quality corporate bonds with maturities that have like less than a year's time period. So very conservative investments that you're looking at, um, but there is there is a difference in you know how these are, are structured. Yeah, money market accounts are not guaranteed. Uh, the T bills are guaranteed by the full faith and credit of the U.S. government, but uh, money market accounts, while they invest in treasury uh, bills and things of that nature, they are not guaranteed. But they do have high degree of liquidity, and they have maintained a pretty constant uh, net asset value. But money market market accounts are not without risk. So that's something that I think is important to Chris's question. But Janet, I want to kind of expand on this just a little bit because the the, the root of this question comes from the popularity of money market accounts today yeah. because interest rates have risen and it seems like that 5% is the magic number. That's where everybody begins to go, oh, well, let me get that risk-free 5% as opposed to this risky 10% over here long-term in the market. And, and I really really want everybody to listen very closely. 5% is not without risk. It is simply a different risk. You're exchanging market risk for your future ability or inability, I should say, to purchase. You're thinking about, the, the key here is to think about your purchasing power and what are the, what's the purpose of these dollars? Now, to be perfectly transparent, we have personally, you know, most of the team here at GenWealth has money in something like a money market or, you know, these days maybe even a savings account that's paying along the same line. So we have conservative dollars, if you will. But I don't consider that to be an investment. Right. It is, it is savings. It is for the purpose of liquidity, not for the purpose of growth. And when you think about 5%, that you can get in some of these money markets these days versus 10%, which is a good long-term average for like the S&P 500. So it, we've actually got a slide to show, if you're watching this on video, to show the comparison of the impact between 5% and 10% over a 20-year and a 30-year period of time. The key is it sounds like it would be a double difference. If I got 5% versus if I got 10%, I'd wind up with you know half as much money or twice as much money, depending on what side of it you're looking at but here's the deal if in both cases <clears throat> excuse me you invested fifty thousand dollars to start out with you don't make any additional contribution so it's just fifty thousand dollars 20 years down the road at five percent you have 135 thousand well you would think at 10 percent you'd have 270 that would be your double right but the power of compound interest is going to add to that money even more. And so that means that instead of having 135000 which you had at 5%, you would have 367000 And, John, if we go out another decade at 5%, your money market at 30 years in, all total, your money market would be at 223000 And, by the way, that's assuming that you can get the 5% for the 30-year period. I'm going to tell you right now, I guarantee to you, they're not going to stay at 5%. But assuming that you could get it at 5% that whole time, then you're at 223000 Where if you'd get 10%, then you're at 995000 So the difference between less than a quarter of a million versus almost a million is what you're looking at on a 5% versus 10% basis long term. Again, there is a time and a place for money markets. Uh, absolutely. But it is more on the saving side than on the investing side. Yeah. And in the financial planning landscape, what you're wanting to use a money market account for are things that are going to be short term purchases. 
uh, emergency savings, things of that nature, money that you're going to need liquidity for in the short term. It's really not a substitute for your long-term investments. It's not a place to hide so you feel better. It's not about feeling. It's about facts. And, and the fact is, if you take a look at the long-term return of any equity-type investment like the S&P 500, the Dow, things of that nature, you're really going to look at a, a lot more return than the average money market account is going to give you. It's also going to give you volatility. And what you have to have to combat that volatility is education mm -hmm. and patience. And those two things working together will get you through the downturns of things like 2008 and uh, 2020 when we had COVID hit and all the upheavals that might go on in the market. Who knows what's going to happen with uh, all the things going on in the Middle East these days. Right. You know, we understand that there are things coming down the road that could affect your financial independence in some way or another on at least a relatively short term basis. But here's what you need to know. A money market account might feel good, but it's very likely not going to get you to financial independence. When you look at the compounding effect of an equity investment, and historically speaking, we saw that on the graph just a little bit ago, that's your ticket toward financial independence. More people have become financially independent through investing in the stock market, through 401ks and things of that nature yeah. than they ever have saving that money in some sort of fixed income instrument. Choosing choosing to feel safe and feel good throughout the time that you're supposed to be investing for retirement is is likely going to cause you to feel broke in retirement. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Um, so there is, you know, the, you've got you've to look at what risk you're taking on. 